And most important, when working with power equipment, please be careful and take all safety precautions. So let's build a hive body. A hive body is the main working part of a hive. It is an easy box to make assuming that you have the correct tools and your saw is in alignment. The following description details how to make an individual hive body. After making one, I recommend making them in batches of at least 10 and preferably more than 10. It is not worthwhile investing your time in the setup required to make an individual hive body. The parts required for a hive body are very, very simple. Two sides and two ends. I have also listed construction or drywall screws and exterior wood glue since it is most important when building a hive body. One six foot long 1 by 8 inch board will provide just the right amount of wood for a medium hive body. I use jigs whenever possible. Building a hive body can be accomplished without these jigs, but if you are going to create more than two or three, the time spent building the jigs is well worth the effort. For safety, remove all the staples that lumber companies use to attach price tags. They usually result in some very, very nasty words when they gouge. All hive bodies have the same length and width. The difference in the height. The heights are 5 and 11 sixteenths for a shallow hive body, 6 and 5 eighths inches for a medium hive body, and 9 and 5 inches for a deep hive body. First, rip the 6 foot board to the correct width for your hive body. Cutting the height in one pass saves time and ensures that the finished heights of the hive bodies, ends and sides, will match up with each other. If possible, Use the ripping of the board to remove any edges that are gouged, loose knots, or other defects. Cut two 19 and 7 8 inches sides from your board. Use a stop block to ensure consistent lengths. It will also make the cutting go much faster. Cut a 3 8 inch by 5 8 inch frame rest in the remainder of the board. Cutting the frame rest before cutting the ants to length requires less material handling and provides for a smoother cut. Here is a jig you can use to hold your board steady while cutting the frame rest. See the chapter Frame Rest Jig in the Be Equipment Essentials book for information on how to make a routing jig. Cut the ends to length from the board. If you are going to use recessed handholds on your hive bodies, cut the ends and sides handholds now. See the chapter Handhold Jig in the Bee Equipment Essentials book for instructions on how to build this jig. If you want an entrance hole, then drill it at this time in one of the end boards. To create a neat hole, drill from one side until the point of the drill pokes through the board. Then flip the board over and use this as a guide for positioning and finish the hole from this side. Drill four screw starter holes in the ends of your long boards. These holes should be drilled 3 eighths of an inch from the edge of the board. If you are building a deep hive body, use 5 screws per corner. See the chapter Drilling Jig in the book Bee Equipment Essentials for instructions on making and using a drilling jig. Now it is time to assemble the box. Use the super jig described in the book Bee Equipment Essentials for your box assembly. If you don't have a jig, then use a framing square to hold the box square for gluing and screwing. Extra care must be taken to ensure the boxes are square. There is no need to start off with an alignment problems. After you have finished assembling the box, if you are using external hand grips, then add them at this time. When positioning these grips, make sure they are far enough from the top of the box to allow for the telescoping cover to be positioned without hitting the grips. Then, use a sander to bevel the top corners of each hive body. This bevel will give you a start when you want to separate the hive bodies with your hive tool. This bevel also acts the same way a gargoyle worked on the medieval churches. It keeps the water from seeping back into the joints. Paint your hive body with the free external paint you got from your recycling center. Regardless of the care you use when selecting wood, you will end up with unusable pieces. Because of this, you will have incomplete boxes. Save the mismatched pieces and eventually you will have enough for a complete hive body. I make these boxes and sell them to members of the club for the cost of the materials. I usually end up with some parts that I cannot use for a box that will be sold. If at all possible, I salvage these parts and use them for my own equipment. Use your pause button to inspect the drawings. Please note the heights listed for a standard Langstroth hive. 
After you have worked out the basic construction for a hive body, you probably will want to mass produce them. You never seem to have enough of them. Here are some changes that will save you the time and energy when building quantities of hive bodies. If you are making a large number of hive bodies, I would suggest the following changes. Use your pause button to inspect and understand this slide. Please note that in step number three, you cut the frame rest for the entire length of an eight foot board, and then in step four, you cut the board to individual lengths. This is much more easy. Using semi-mass production techniques reduces the time needed to build a hive body from 50 minutes to 30 minutes. And with a little practice, you can even reduce the 30 minutes by some. I have been using brood boxes and honey supers built with hand-selected number three pine for over six years. The combination of two coats of paint, screws instead of nails, and high quality exterior glue has kept them in excellent condition. The use of butt joints does not seem to have any effect on the longevity of the boxes. As a matter of fact, there are fewer seams to allow water to collect in and rot wood. The beveled corners reduce the gouging of the wood by your hive tool. This also keeps water from rotting the wood. This video, along with five additional videos in the series, contain all the information needed for you to construct a complete hive. The videos in this series are how to build a hive stand, a bottom board, an entrance reducer, hive bodies, an inner cover, and a telescoping stop. The B Equipment Essentials book is the one place where you can find all the dimensions and instructions needed to construct the basic equipment used by backyard and serious sideliner beekeepers. The B Equipment Essentials book is available through Wickwack Press at wickwack.com by emailing me at ornocohoney at p-i-t-e-l dot net. Also, a CD with all six videos is available from ornocohoney at p-i-t-e-l dot net. For more information on this book and the author of this series, please see the introduction segment of this series. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it has been a help to you. Please tell your friends about it and happy beekeeping.